All right, happy Friday. Hopefully you are doing well at home. And uh, a third video this week after we took a long hiatus. And uh, as I say, we do videos when there's breaking news. And certainly the news came about regarding Trailblazers president um, Neil O'Shea, who was dismissed uh, earlier today, uh, president of the Trailblazers after a... a um, investigation concluded that he um, exhibited I guess what we can call it workplace misconduct um, I don't have any details about the investigation I'm not here to talk about the investigation and go over people's characters I will say this though Neil Shea was very good to me when I was in New Jersey and Brooklyn uh, he was very good to me when I'm in the media right now I have a, a good relationship with him um, so I'm not going to go into a whole diatribe about what happened because I don't know what happened. And unless uh, management in Portland, which includes ownership, um, either releases the report or has a press conference and goes over everything, um, I think we're gonna be a little bit in uh, walking around with blinders on right now. But I am not going to do this video on looking back at what happened. Um, certainly a you know eight year playoff run with O'Shea uh, under his watch here, including at conference uh, finals. I think it's, for what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look for ahead as far as what is next. So Joe Cronin is the interim uh, general manager. I've known Joe, he's one of their salary cap guys, certainly in their player personnel department here, uh, has been in Portland for a long time. Uh, I think it's interesting to note that in the, uh, the, the press release that they are going to look for a I guess if it's a president of basketball operations or a general manager to come in into a very, very delicate uh, situation. Uh, Portland's 11 and 12. They're in ninth place, and um, they are vanilla. I think that's probably one of the worst, you know, probably one of the, I don't want to say worst words, but the one word you don't want to label a roster, um, it's vanilla. Uh, and I know there's injuries to Damian Lillard right now. I know there's injuries to Anthony Simons. Um, Nasir Little are all out uh, a little bit of an extended period of time, but uh, they struggled when Lillard was healthy. Uh, they certainly struggled in the San Antonio game when he was out. Um, and there's going to be some big decisions that are going to be have to made either by Joe Cronin leading up to the February 10th trade deadline, or if they have a um, a replacement, a full time replacement in there. And I think. You know, certainly the first two um, is going to be what happens with Robert Covington and Yosef Nurkic, who are an, an, on an expiring contract. Keep in mind next year that Portland has $96 million already tied up in three players, which is Lillard, McCollum, and Norman Powell. Do you want to go into the luxury tax again with an average roster? Both those guys are on expiring contracts. If you are a playing team at best, it's time to look at both players from a trade market standpoint and do not wait until February 10th. I think if you can get something done with either player now, you go ahead and, and do that. And I think you know, those are the two names that are going to keep an eye on. But the big thing for me is, and if I was running the Trailblazers or if I was an, the owner, the facto owner here, um, the one thing I would ask the general manager prospect who is interviewing is that, what would you do with Damian Lillard? And it's a little bit of a loaded question, right? Probably the best player in franchise history, a player that is loyal to a T, maybe to a fault, um, is in year one of this $176 million Supermax extension, um, has not said he wanted out. Certainly there were hints during the summer uh, as far as him not being happy with the roster after they lost to a depleted Denver team here. Um, and that would be the first question of I am ownership. I am going to ask a general manager, what would you do with Damian Lillard? And if I'm sitting across from ownership right now, my answer would be I would start putting out feelers for Damian Lillard. Um, I'm not going to trade him just to trade, but I do think we're getting to the point where it's going to have to be that Portland trades Damian Lillard. That's the only way that we're going, they're going to get a reboot of this roster. That is the only way that you kind of rebuild or retool this roster. Let's face it, if you keep 
McCollum, Lillard, and Powell. You're just going to keep on spinning the wheels here. You're going to be a consistent playing team here. You're going to play the minimum market as far as veterans, the Dennis Smiths of the world, the Cody Zellers of the world, the Tony Snells of the world. That's what you're looking at in the future here because you have that much money tied up. And I never want to use a franchise player as a scapegoat um, as far as maybe for a little bit of a flawed roster. But considering that Lillard, you know, besides certainly C.J. McCollum, has the most trade value here and is under contract for the next, including this year, three seasons, got a player option on that last year, um, that would be where I'm going. I am looking at what is the market for Damian Lillard. I'm not going to draw a line in the sand as far as being stubborn, as far as what the uh, trade shooters. And the first team I would call would be Philadelphia. Okay? And I'm not calling Philadelphia for Ben Simmons. I'm not doing that. I'm calling Philadelphia for players like Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey, Matisse Thybul. That's what I'm looking for as far as a type of deal when it regards Lillard. Certainly, we can talk draft picks all we want, considering that Portland has one going out to, uh, that's lottery protected, that's going to Chicago, um, as far as from the Larry Nance trade. But I do think we are running at a time when um, it is going to be for Portland to start looking at trade suitors when it comes to the Damian Lillard. He's 31 years old. Um, he has an injury right now. He has played, I, I was doing some notes here, he's played 35 plus minutes per night every season since he was drafted in 2012. Eventually, the body starts to break down here, right? We are going to see that. Is, is it going to be we're in a position where it's John Wall? I don't think so. When we're talking about the Supermax and it's a dead contract or even Russell Westbrook, I, I think Lillard will still play at an all-star level. But will he be a top five player, a top ten player in the league? I, I, I'm not so sure about that anymore. And I think we are at the point where if you are Portland, you better act now instead of a year from now or two years from now when you're looking at 60 cents on the dollar. And unfortunately, if you're Joe Cronin, who's the interim GM, I don't think you have full autonomy to start putting out feelers for Damian Lillard. I think that's for whoever the next general manager is going to be. And I think if you bring back this same group, minus Nurkic, minus Covington, I just think it's a Band-Aid as far as what the future is going to be. So Portland's got a lot of decisions that they're going to have to figure it out here. Certainly, as I mentioned, Nurkic, Covington, expiring contracts. Um, you know, Covington's role has certainly been diminished. I think Nurkic still has value. The other thing, and I've, I've, I've talked about it, expiring contracts still have value in this league because both players have bird rights. So if Nurkic is traded to a team and Covington is traded to a team, because teams have few cap, spa you know, cap space this offseason, they'll be able to sign them, exceed the cap. We saw that with Norman Powell. We've seen that Jared Allen, um, Jordan Clarkson, players like that. So they still have value despite them being on an expiring contract. But I think it starts with those two players, and then I think it's going to be time to look at the trade market and the future as far as for Damian Lillard. If you're Portland, act now. Don't wait later. The Trailblazers firing Neil Olshay, the team's president of basketball operations and GM. The investigation determined that he violated its code of workplace conduct. Portland promoting director of player personnel Joe Cronin to interim general manager. Woj is here with the insight. Woj, what does this mean for the Portland organization? Uh, Greeny, so much over the last several months, and really in this last month, from the beginning of this investigation, it is headed toward this moment of truth with Portland next summer. Do they give Damian Lillard a two-year, $107 million Supermax extension? He'll turn 32 in July, and you're talking about paying Dame Lillard $55 million at 35, 36 years old. And how they conduct this search in Portland, does this organization decide that they're going to continue to build around Dame Lillard? Are they going to uh, empower a general manager to come in and make a decision about what's best 
for that organization moving forward. You can trade Dame Lillard and get a lot for him now. You will not be able to get a lot for him at his at that kind of advanced age with that kind of contract. He's wanted that Supermax deal. Uh, that's a big part of this. And will those around Dame Lillard, will they have influence in this search and make sure that a general manager or an executive gets in there uh, who's going to oblige and give that Supermax contract is that what's best for Portland's future? Uh, that's really a fascinating way of looking at this whole thing. So much hanging in the balance on this decision, and Woj obviously will be all over it. It's been sort of a crazy little stretch of time here for the Trailblazers. The last six months, if you look at it, after eight straight playoff appearances, they fired Terry Stotts, the coach, in June. They hired Chauncey Billups in his place, but this season has not gone thus far the way they would have hoped. They're currently sitting ninth in the West with an 11-12 and 12 record. Lillard is out with a low abdominal injury, and the group is looking completely different based on where they're playing. The Trailblazers are 10 and 2 at home, 1 and 10 on the road, which is 29th in the NBA. And so let's get to the question I think every basketball fan in the world is asking. Stephen A, how do you think all of this impacts the future of Damian Lillard? If Damian Lillard doesn't want to stay and he does want to stay in Portland. He'd write, to, you know, if you talk to him, his whole thing is I want to be here. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to retire. The only thing that would really, really tickle him and make him entertain wanting to leave Portland, believe it or not, is going to the New York Knicks. Hmm. There are people in his camp that would like to convince him to give Philadelphia stronger consideration. But when he thinks about the New York Knicks, he thinks about going to the top market in the country, thinks about obviously marketability. He might not be thinking about that, but his team might be thinking about that. But Damian Lillard knows that if he were in the Mecca, it would be far easier for him to recruit teammates to want to come and play with him as opposed to him being in the Pacific Northwest. The New York Knicks would be his number one preference. Not the, the Lakers, not the Brooklyn Nets, not the Philadelphia 76ers. But do the New York Knicks have something I want if I'm Portland? Exactly. Enough. That's the problem. And that becomes a problem while you know Philadelphia has something that if you are Portland, you want. Mm -hmm. And Ben Simmons is, is the centerpiece of that whole deal. So Stephen A, and I, you know, I mean, I like that about Damian Lillard, that there is that loyalty, there is that connection with community. People talk about that stuff all the time. They often don't mean it. Damian Lillard, as we all know from talking yes. to him, means it. Means it. But if I'm, if I'm Philadelphia, man, I'm burning up the line. At some point, the Sixers have to do something about this Ben Simmons situation, and the season's moving on. So rekindle the conversation. In the meantime, Jalen, what are the Knicks if they could find a way to get Damian Lillard? I don't think the Knicks necessarily have the assets to get Dame Lillard. Like, y'all call me, y'all. I'm sending y'all the voicemail. Right. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Like, the Knicks are 500 right now. Right. Like, I know we're excited about them being relevant, but they are 500. Right. They don't have the assets to get Dame. I hate this for Chauncey Billups, too. Because I believe he has the potential of a Monty Williams, of a Ty Lue as a head coach. But when you now lose your GM, to me, it's time to blow it up. And it's not because of Dame or CJ. It's because of well, Nurkic and the lack of help that they get and the lack of balance that they have as a basketball team. The reality of the situation is they've had ample opportunity to win and they haven't gotten it done. I know they got to the Western Conference Finals a few years ago, but that was pretty much it. That's why Terry Stotts had to go. You brought a new voice in like Chauncey Billups. We respect Chauncey Billups. My personal opinion is I viewed him more as a president of basketball operations as opposed to a head coach, but he's in the door the way he's in the door. This is what we have to come to, and I've been somebody, I've spoken to C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard about this over the years directly personally to their face I don't believe they're ever winning together I think you use one of them to acquire a bunch of assets to play with the other that stays you let that other person go and you move on from there because I don't care what I think about Chauncey Billups as a coach and I think he's got a lot of promise let me be very very clear on national television the Portland Trailblazers ain't winning a damn thing as presently constructed, and no one is clamoring to come to the Pacific Northwest to play with them, which means they ain't winning anything, period. But you're right, and, and, and I'm going to double down on what you say. That means you got to eventually move both of them. Yeah. Okay. Not just one, because you got to get off of those salaries in a salary cap-driven sport, and they're both terrific And who are you performers. bringing in that has that sort of authority, right? And then interim is not happening with that. When mm -hmm. you talk about blowing up that friend, remember, that's the that's the whole show in town Correct. in Oregon. I don't think you right? need to lose both of them, though. No. They have been the perfect example of good but not great. They've actually made the playoffs eight straight seasons. That is the longest streak.